Okay, this video shows how the Thunderbolt one, uh, the Thunderbolt RCM one, uh, that's a three phase, and no, that's a single phase, and that's three phase. Sorry, I got it backwards. Um, how they work? They basically work the same. I'm category, I'm breaking it up. So I've broken it up into four different sections. Um, how relays overall work. So if you don't know how a relay works, the first part shows you. The second part is how the furnace relays work on the Thunderbolts. Um, and most relays, and then the other part is how what the Agasat does, and then the other part is what the switches do. Um, that's basically what this entire video is about. All the electrical mechanical sirens use relay, no matter what it is. Thunderbolt, 2T22, STH10, they all use relays. Said this is a basic coil or motor starter or relay. So we have a couple of different parts. We have the contactors, which would be this thing. And basically what it is, is it's risen or raised up against this part, and when it comes in contact, they connect together. Let's zoom in a bit. So as you can see, they're not connected, now they're connected, and they're touching, which makes the connection. Just like a light switch. And then down here we have the coil, and this is where you plug your positive lead or your negative or your positive you know you make the connection from here to here and when power goes to this it becomes energized and magnetic and we all know mag magnets attract metal so it would clamp down on this creating the connection and I dropped it so what happens is positive would be here and then it would, this would be going to your motor your siren your air conditioner whatever you would be called a load um, and then it would come back, negative would go through here. It's got the same thing on this side, and then that would be your positive going back to your breaker box. And what would happen was, let's say it's an air conditioner, and your thermostat tells the air conditioner to kick on. The um, thermostat would make a connection, and this would become energized, pull this down, the power would jump through here, and now it's got a, a way to get down there, go through the load, and come back to the negative, jump through that side, and go back out through the negative into your box. And then the thermostat goes, okay, time to turn it off. And it will kill the connection in the coil, so the coil no longer has power going to it, and it would no longer be magnetic. And there's a spring pulling this up. It would pull up, and there is no longer power going into, there's no longer power going from here to here. So basically, that's how a relay works. Inside the um, RCM ones, um, they're a little bit different. They're the same thing, but they're just a little bit more complex. They usually use furnace relays. Um, again, whether you're using a Thunderbolt, a 2T22, um, usually they use furnace relays, um, and that's just a furnace, is what it's called, relay. So basically, you still again, you have your two con, you have your contactors right here as you can see they're open and then this contactor right here is usually for the coil it has to do something with the relay itself I'm not sure can't remember and then um, this is a single phase as you can see and then let's move over here and look at the three phase and as you can see there are three contactors pa um, phase one phase two and phase three now what are these things down here at the bottom these things are called heaters and amps when you have amps you have a lot of heat Usually amps generate heat. It's why you're, if you have a stove or an um, electric stove, it uses up quite a bit of amps. So what happens is the current goes through this piece of metal, and if there's too much electricity or current um, amps, you know, it will heat this piece of metal up, and when metal ex heats up, it expands. And it touches that little center piece, and it will drop out the, it will, I think it will ground the circuit, I'm not sure how it works, but it will make the relay drop out. And that's how it saves the, you know, it's just a little precaution. Um, single phase usually, well, I think single phase only have, single phase ones only have one heater. And three phase will always have heaters on each phase. With three phase, you have to have everything the same on each phase. Or else it will unbalance the phase and fuck, uh, screw your motor up. So that's how these relays work.
This is the Agastat. What the Agastat does is it keeps the blower and the rotator still rotating when the chopper drops out. If we didn't have that, when the chopper dropped out, the AR timer stopped for an attack, you know, when it stops to wind down, the blower and rotator would both stop. So to prevent that from happening, we have an Agastat. <laughs> Now as the chopper motor kicks out, the Agastat makes sure the rotator continues to stay on. Um, this is a 220, uh, actually 240 it says, uh, volt coil, uh, which means this will not work on 120, it will not work properly. Um, it has a 1.5 second to 15 second time delay, same thing with the three phase. Um, and what happens is, to make this thing work, it works off of the, it follows the chopper relay. And as you can see, all chopper relays are going to have three phase relays, but there's only going to be one heater, as you can see. Um, same thing with this relay. This is the three phase unit, and this is the chopper for the three phase unit. It's the chopper relay. As you can see, it's got one heater, and um, still three contactors. And that's what a three phase will look like because you've got three con uh, heaters. So anyways, back to what I was saying, is what's going to happen is when the chopper drops out, so the AR timer stops with the connection, it's going to drop this out and this is no longer going to be connected. It, the switch will be off basically and it will tell the Agastat to um, keep running these for however many seconds you have. Um, I set mine to six because that's what my AR timers do. They turn off for six seconds and as soon as the AR timer kicks back on the, these relays will be ready to be turned back on and this comes back down and tells um, and it bypasses the coil and keeps them on. And then when it turns off this kicks on and keeps the Agastat kicks on and keeps these running. Now that we talked about the Agastat, let's talk about the switches because there's a couple of different set of switches on here. There's the control switch, which um, basically just turns the Agastat controls off and it, uh, power doesn't go to the transformer. So power doesn't get to the chopper. So you can uh, test everything, the relays and everything, and all that. So that's what that switch does. And then there's a uh, the chopper contactor switch so you can turn that on and it just turns the contactor on for the chopper so the chopper will turn on and there's the blower which turns the blower on and then the rotator switch there also is a it's a three-way switch so then the um, that's off so I can set it to automatic off so it won't rotate ever or you can set it to test and it will trigger the rotator and these three switches work by basically just having power coming to all these and it bypasses the Agastat and everything else so when you flip this on the power I'll show you as you can see that's supplying the power and it just runs down into the coil and gives the coil power which activates it there's a little bit more to it but in a nutshell that's how it works So this is kind of, so the basic overview is the power comes in here, goes to all the relays, and then when um, the, the connection is made, the chopper and blower and rotator kick on. And as soon as the connection is cut or turned off or whatever you want to call it, it's disconnected, then the drop, chopper drops out and tells basically tells the Agastat to kick to keep these two on these two stay on and then once the seconds is up they either pull out they drop out or if the connection is made again between your controls right here or power is you know led back in whatever 
they will all kick back on again. And then the transformer steps down power. In a nutshell, that's pretty much how they both work.